Welcome back. It is Wednesday, May 8th in the NBA. My three best bets are on the way. We only have one playoff game on today as the New York Knicks take on the Indiana Pacers. I got a couple picks in this game that we're going to talk about in one moment. But first, let's do a recap of how we did yesterday and 0-3 day. Just back-to-back -back bad NBA days. Let's talk about it. Al Horford over two and a half first quarter points. Bad read on my end. I expected him actually to play more in the first quarter, but only played six minutes. Not like he didn't get a shot. He had a wide open three. He just did not make it. What can you do there? I'll take the bad read there. The other two really felt like we probably should at least split there. Jalen Williams played really poorly in the first half. Really didn't shoot the ball well all game long. Got super close with a good fourth quarter, but ended two points plus assists short. And then Chet Holmgren finished with, I don't know how many points, 19 points. And he got seven rebounds. We needed one more rebound. And 0-3 day. I know it's been a bad you know few days in the NBA. Just the last two. We were on a really good streak prior to get the last two days. We're going to dial it back in. I'm not going to, I'm not in the business to make excuses. I got to be better. And hopefully the picks are better today. As always, let me know what you guys are riding with down below in the comments. I got three picks in this Pacers next game. I really like all three of them. I think we're going three. No today. We're bringing out the brooms tomorrow morning, but without further ado, let's dive into the picks today. Hit that subscribe button. First pick of the day is a line that is honestly crazy to even say out loud. Jalen Brunson over 37 and a half points plus 102 on DraftKings. Now, I know people are going to see this line, see 37 and a half and say, that's too dang high. I'm going to take the under. People are going to get cute, take that under. However, Brunson's been insane. His usage is insane. And I think his usage is only going to go up the rest of this series. Now, obviously, this is a super high line. A lot of things have to go right for Brunson. And I can see why people would want to back the under here. But I think that Brunson will continue to score well because the Pacers are going to let him beat them by themselves. Now, Brunson's last, and I'll talk about what, what I mean by that. Brunson's last five games, though, if you've been fading him, you're probably bankrupt. 39, 47, 40, 41, and 43 points. Going over in all five. And in game one, 43 points, but he shot 26 times, 14 free throw attempts. Now, obviously, it's a 37 and a half point line. Honestly, bonkers. The highest we've really ever seen in the playoffs. Only other higher line I've ever seen is probably for James Harden a few years back in his Houston Rockets days. He was closer to 38 and a half, 39 and a half. Wouldn't surprise me if Brunson got up that high. And honestly, Brunson wasn't very selfish in game one. He had 15 potential assists. But the problem with the Pacers and why they lost is they let everyone else get going. Not only was Brunson going to cook them, he's going to cook them regardless. He can't double team and that's just not the case but they did throw some doubles at him what happened in game one josh hart 24 points dante divincenzo 25 points those guys shot 30 combined times og also got his field goal attempts didn't make them 13 points on 5 of 14 shooting that is the problem for the Pacers. It's not that Brunson scored 43. It's the fact that they let everyone else on the Knicks get going. I believe what the Pacers have done all year long is they're like, you know what? Your number one guy can beat us. We will live with that. Your number one guy going out there and destroying us one-on-one -on -one playing isolation. We will live with that because we trust our offense on the other side, led by Tyrese Halliburton, to go out there and outscore you. We can outscore your one guy if we get all the other guys in a really efficient offensive scheme. That's what the Pacers have done all year long. However, in game one, they got a little bit too cute. Started to throw some doubles at my uh, at Jalen Brunson using Miles Turner on some screens. And what happened? Well, everyone else got going on the Knicks. Not what the Pacers had been doing all year long, which was staying home on shooters like Dante DiVincenzo and hopefully limiting Josh Hart drives and transition. I think they're much better defensively today. But by being better defensively, I don't necessarily think that comes on guys like uh, Jalen Brunson, a guy that they're going to live with getting his usage with or without it. I mean, Brunson's last three games against Indiana, 40, 39, and 43 points going over in all three. The previous two were regular season games. He shot 20, 30 and 25 times, plus 11 and 10 free throw attempts in those games, and only played 37 minutes in each of them. Obviously, we've seen Brunson minutes uptick. He's played like 42, 44 minutes in game one. He's going to continue to play a lot of minutes. If I had to bet who I thought won this game, actually, the Pacers have a really good shot at winning this. Probably more Brunson minutes, and he's going to have to be aggressive. Obviously, got going in that fourth quarter, but besides the first quarter, he was pretty quiet from the second and third quarter. I think only four points in the third. They let the other guys get going in that fourth quarter, and in that second half, Dante DiVincenzo had like 21 points in the second half. I really think this is a spot. Sure, 37 and a half. Is it crazy? If he went under, it wouldn't shock me, but I really think this is just going to be continue to be a theme. They're going to let Brunson beat them one-on-one. -on -one. They got a little bit too cute in game one. Doubling guys, I think that this is a game Brunson gets another 30 field goal attempts tonight. I'll take my chance with Jalen Brunson be able to cook that Pacers defense, which concedes a ton of points where he wants to shoot in the mid-range, in that floater, in that paint area. That's where Brunson scores. Great spot to back and give me his over 37 and a half points. No, it's crazy. Brunson delivering us a winner. Now I got two more picks. We're going to go to the other side of the equation to the Pacers. Two Pacers players that I really like in their spots today. The first one is Aaron Neesmith of the Indiana Pacers, obviously. Over 11 and a half points, plus 102 on drafting. So, plus money, I'll take 
it here. Most books are at like minus 110. I would place about minus 125 or so. And Neesmith, as a fan of the Knicks, has been a pain, a thorn in the Knicks' side for the better part of the last two years. Here's what I mean. In the last seven games versus New York, including game one, Neesmith, 23, 12, 14, 25, 17, 13, and 12 points, going over in all seven. In game one, 12 points, but actually only shot six times. Did get six free throw attempts, but he didn't make either of his three-pointers. If there's a reason that Neesmith is out there, mostly for defense and knocking down threes, Neesmith is a 40-plus percent three-point shooter. So the fact he went 0 for 2 makes me think, well, maybe a 3 or 2 is going to fall today. And Neesmith didn't get a lot of field goal attempts at all and still got over this line. And I really think this is going to be a guy that the Knicks will probably leave open here and there, and he should be able to make them pay. He's made, made them pay for the better part of the last two years. The Knicks are willing to let guys like Neesmith and guys like Miles Turner beat them. They're going to stay home on Siakam with OG Ananobi. They're going to obviously guard uh, Halliburton as best as they can. But Neesmith is a guy that they will consistently play a lot of minutes. Last game in game one, he struggled with foul trouble. Four fouls in the first half, only played 12 minutes. This is a guy that's going to play upwards of 34, 36, 38 minutes if he can avoid foul trouble. Obviously, he's out there for defensive purposes against guys like Jalen Brunson. So hopefully Brunson doesn't get him in, him into too much foul trouble because we don't want Brunson to absolutely nuke Neesmith. But even though he did get him into foul trouble, he still went over last game. Not a lot of field goal attempts. I really think this is a good spot to back Aaron Neesmith. Guy that's not afraid of attacking the hoop. Plays a lot with the second unit too, and that no longer has Mitchell Robinson. So not really great rim protection for that Nick second unit. Neesmith, a guy that's going to be aggressive, attack the hoop. Probably gets a smaller guy like Dante DiVincenzo on him, and he can catch, a, catch and shoot if he needs to. But he also drive in those spots. And Neesmith's not afraid of taking his own shot. Like I said, only six shots in game one. I think he shoots more tonight. Probably closer to eight to ten. Should be enough usage to get him over this line. So Neesmith over 11 and a half points. My second pick in this game. And my third pick is going to be a guy I kind of already hinted at in the Neesmith write-up. Miles Turner. I really like his over. 17 and a half points. Minus 113 on Caesars. If there's anything that I learned in that game one, the Knicks were willing to let uh, Neesmith. Not, Neesmith didn't get a ton of field goal attempts. But they really didn't want Hallie. Burton and Pascal Siakam to beat them. They were willing to let guys like Neesmith or Miles Turner beat them. And Miles Turner didn't beat them, but had a pretty dang good game. And I like both these two guys to score their points tonight. In game one, Turner, 23 points in 35 minutes. Let's consider the minutes. Isaiah Jackson played really well off the bench. Without Mitchell Robinson, I don't know how much Isaiah Jackson continues to play in this series, but even in that, he shot eight for 16, two for six from three, five of six from the free throw line. So, I mean, 20, 22 points or uh, field goal attempts plus free throw attempts, pretty good usage. And I don't see that usage really going down a ton. I mean, Turner set a ton of screens for Halliburton. If he pick and popped for the three point line, wide open. Isaiah Hartenstein was either covering a Halliburton on those screens or dropping back into the paint. Tyron Turner, wide open on a lot of those opportunities. And then he can also cut to the hoop and get some easy lands, or maybe get to the free throw line, which is exactly what he did in game one. I mean, he has a huge size advantage on anyone on the Knicks team, except for Isaiah Hartenstein, their starting center. But outside of that, I really think Miles Turner will continue to be aggressive. We saw him have a really good series versus the Milwaukee Bucks until Milwaukee started not dropping on those screens and instead forcing Miles Turner. Basically, he had a guy on him all the game, all game long. So I really think that Miles Turner will continue to get some open looks like i said mitchell robinson is out so that helps for him in terms of getting it down low and getting some size and mismatches down there but i see no reason for him to not continuously see 12 or more shots he really should not uh, get into too much foul trouble here but turner over this line in 17 and a half points 32 of 44 games 73 percent when he shoots 12 or more times his last four against the knicks 28, 5, 23, and 23 points. They kind of struggle with that size from the big man position. We saw Joel Embiid get a lot of open opportunities from the three-point line based on how the Knicks play defense. I really think that we're going to see Miles Turner consistently get wide open threes from the top of the key or from the uh, either of the you know sides of the hoop. He should get what, plenty of open opportunities. If the threes are falling, should be a no-sweat bet. Maybe the threes aren't falling. He can go down below. He had some wide open mid ranges from the free throw line that he happened to miss. Really struggled in the first half. I think he only scored like six or eight or not too many points in the first half. I think he can easily have a good spot here. So Miles Turner, really like him over 17 and a half points. I don't normally bat on Miles Turner because I swear he gets into foul trouble anytime I touch his props. But given that Jalen Brunson is the number one guy here, Brunson, not really a guy that draws a ton of fouls in the paint. I mean, Miles Turner's going to rim protect, but in terms of the guy that he draws fouls on, or typically the guys guarding him, Miles Turner in a lot of Drop coverage, staying back there, protecting the paint. Brunson can obviously do his floaters and get into that mid-range game, which is where Brunson makes his makes his money is right there. So three picks today. I don't typically do three in one game, but I really like all three of these. Brunson's over in points. Neath Smith's over in points. Miles Turner over in points. Three overs. 
what could go wrong? But I really do like all three of these. I don't, I mean, Halliburton would probably spawn in with 30 points just to piss me off. But I really think Turner and Eastmith got great spots. Obviously, they're going to play a lot of minutes as the Pacers try to avoid going down 0-2. And I really do think Jalen Brunson's going to be the one guy on the Knicks that the Pacers will let beat them. He just has to go out there and knock down some shots. 37 and a half. I know that's crazy, but I really think it's honestly going to be the line going forward in this series. And I think he's going to hit the over more often than not, given he's shooting 25 plus times a game, getting 10 plus free throw attempts. Look, it's Jalen Brunson. He's going to continuously get that usage, and Tom Thibodeau will continue to run him into the ground. So those are my three picks of the day. Turner, Neesmith, Brunson, points, boom. 3-0 car. Let's go 3-0. Bounce back after yesterday's just just unlucky nature of events. We don't want to bet on luck, but sometimes that's what happens. You need your guys to knock down some shots or maybe grab some boards. Hey, I like these three picks. Let's have a great Pacers versus Knicks game, too. See you guys back tomorrow with some more picks. It's Austin. It's out of now. Peace.